Hi, my name is Natasha Holland and today I would like to talk to you again about art and about God. I would like to tell you about my new painting which called Cup Overflowing. And this painting has a subtitle, which is from the trickle, to the stream, to the river, to the flood. And its subtitle is not only for this painting, but it's for my life as well. I really love this saying, which I heard first time from Kenneth Copeland, but I've been saying this so often that it's now became my words. This is something I would like to say to me and live by it and expect this happened in my life. So this painting is about my beautiful niece Katya and her husband Sergei. And I would like to tell you about what caused me to paint this painting, about its heart. And question I would like to ask you, which I all often ask myself. Do you know why not all people come to God? Do you understand why even those people who know that, they, that God exists and that He is real, why don't they, don't they come to God? Why they not follow God? Not passionate about Him? Why not all? And I think I know the answer. In my opinion, and it's my personal opinion, I think it's because they don't know him well. They simply don't know him. They don't know his beauty and beauty of his love. And I'm absolutely convinced that anyone, absolutely anyone who would get to know God so close, who would get to know his love, they would follow him. They would not be able to be indifferent. They will not be able to reject or not be passionate about him. That's what I think and I'm really sure about it. I really believe so. And even those people who call themselves atheists, or those people who don't follow God, follow God because of some temporary pleasures, they don't follow in Him only because they don't know Him. They don't know Him well. If only I knew, if only I knew, I would run headlong. On my wings I flew towards you alone. If only I understood the greatness of your love, I'd leave all behind for good if I could comprehend I'm your beloved. The triumph of your victory, your desire for me, on the cross your love looks a mystery towards those who are not worthy. O oh, Agapa, is it possible to comprehend your love sacrificial, how to explain the bloodshed, how could beatings be beneficial? If only I knew, only knew the gift of your love unconditional, I would look only for you in my past life superficial. Sacrifice in the name of salvation, eternal life, for the great price, love reward is for healing nations, open ears and blind eyes. It's impossible to perceive by mind, gratitude overwhelms my heart, sun as a lamb for mankind, to repay a debt on my part. Magnificent, you Agapa, my friend, Oh my God and my beloved, can the world ever comprehend the cost of the blood of love? And now I would like to tell you a parable of Lord Jesus. 
which he told in Luke 15, 11 to 32. And I tell you with my own words. There were once a man, a rich man, who had two sons. And youngest son told him, Father, give me my inheritance now. And to surprise, father agreed. And he divided inheritance between sons and gave it to the youngest son, his portion. Very soon, he went to the um, countries far away and he spent and wasted all the money and all the wealth he had from his father. And very soon, he became in need and he was hungry because it was great famine in that country and he hired himself to a man in, those con in this country to feed the pigs and he was so starving so he was desired to eat this food from pigs pot but nobody would give him and that made him to come to himself. And he was saying, what am I doing here? In my home, father has servants and they have three meals a day and more. And I'm here starving from hunger. I'm going home. I come to my father and I would say, father, I sin against you and against God. I am no longer worthy to be called your son, but make me like one of your hired servants. And he went. But his father saw him from a distance. And you know, I heard once somebody said that, and, that, and we know that in the in old age they were wearing these robes, lawn robes, and this man, very um, a, a rich man, respectable man and he pulled his rope like that and he ran he forgot about his dignity and he was run towards his son who he been waiting all this time he ran towards him and he hugged him and his son opened his mouth to say prepare words and he was saying father i sinned against you and against god and i'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But father, he don't want to even listen. He was said, hurry to his servants. Bring a rich robe, a best robe from our house. Dress him. Put the family ring. Put on his finger. Bring the best shoes. Bring the cow. The fatted cow. Cook it. Roast it. And we're going to celebrate. We're going to have a great feast for the son of mine. He was dead and now he is alive. He was lost and now he is found. And they began to celebrate. And then from the distance, all the son heard this music. And he came to house and he was saying, hey, what happened? And the servants asking, saying to him, Oh, it's your brother came back and your father threw a feast because he received him home whole and, and alive and they celebrated and he became so angry and he refused to go in. But father, he came out and started to talk to his oldest son and try to persuade him and he said the son he was saying father I've been working for you all this life I've been obedient son I never do anything which would not please displease you and you never even uh, kill a little goat to give me to celebrate with my friends but this son of yours when he wasted all your wealth with the prostitutes and with a weird horrible living 
and now he came back, you receive him, and you throw in a feast for him. And he was so angry, and he didn't want to go home. And father replied, son, you always with me, and all I have, all mine, is yours, for you to enjoy. But son didn't want to listen. But we should celebrate now and we should be merry and happy because this brother of yours, he was dead once and now he alive. He was lost but now he is found. And you know, sometimes I see this syndrome of the oldest brother in Christians. It happens sometimes when they don't want to receive this teaching about God's grace. They condemn young Christians, they condemn young people, they condemn those who been, came from really bottom and they point fingers at them, at them and say they don't dress right, they don't behave right, they don't say in the right words. Of course, you should know where they come from. And I think we should be more like a father, more compassionate, more loving. We should have his heart. We should understand what father has in his heart and be influenced by it. We should receive those brothers, we should receive those sisters and celebrate their salvation and be happy for those churches who are doing this and those churches who open the doors but not criticize them. In one point of our lives we've all been like this prodigal son. We've all been like lost sheep. And you know, in reality, this story, this Bible story, it begins from Adam. I believe that Adam did not know God well enough. He didn't know him because if he only knew, he would stop if. If he only knew him, he would not believe devil. If he only knew God, good enough, he would run towards him. Why hiding? Why didn't run towards God and repent? But he didn't know him. If he only knew God's forgiving heart, God's loving heart, he would say, Father, I sin against you. I sin against heaven. But he didn't do this. He knew Eve, but he didn't know God close enough. This is my personal opinion. And I think many would agree with me. And you know, because of that, they sin. And because of that, we who've been born after Adam, we sin because we inherit sinful nature from Adam, but not because we are sinners by itself. It has been inherited. We commit sin because we already have sin in our blood. And Bible also tells us about it. And I would like to read you from Romans 5.12 from Passion Translation. When Adam sinned, the entire world was affected. Sin entered human experience and death was the result and so death followed this sin casting its shadow over all humanity because all have sinned and only God can change this sinful nature in humans. And it's why Christ was needed to come to this world. And it's why he was needed to suffer for us. Because it's only through his death 
the sin could be taken away through the blood, the sacrificial blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I would like to confirm this by scripture, Romans 5.15. Now, there is no comparison between Adam's transgression and the gracious gift that we experience. For the magnitude of the gift far outweighed the crime. It's true that many died because of one man's transgression, but how much greater will God's grace and His gracious gift of acceptance overflow to many because of what one man, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, did for us. Even so, we all became this prodigal, all those lost sheep. For all have sinned and became short of the glory of God, all without exception. But thank God for Jesus. He came to this world, the last Adam, and he painted a completely different picture. He said, I am the way, the truth. I am a good shepherd, and I lay down my life for sheep. He is the one who shows his, his way to us, and he is the one who shows his father, his character, because he knew him. He said, if you saw me, you have seen Father. And also, Jesus was saying to us, I am the light. Why did he say that? It's because God saying about those people who don't know him, that they don't know how to discern their right hand from the left. So Jesus saying, look at it, me, I am the one who would lead your way, follow me. And only God who is love could leave 99 out of 100 and go look for that one, one prodigal, one lost sheep, and you are this sheep. And I, I used to be this sheep, and he found me, and he took me into his sight, into his embrace, and now he leads me in my life, each step at the time, and give me a Holy Spirit, and he will do the same with you. And what about our heroes, Katya and Sergei? You know, the, there was a time when they was also lost, and then Jesus lead the way from the darkness and they found Jesus and they found each other and their faces become shining because God changed them so much from inside out so it became so difficult to recognize them their faces shining with the love of Jesus and we their friends and relatives look at, at them and rejoicing together with them because now everything going to be all right amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me I once was lost, but now am found. Was blind, but now I see.
Thank you.